we do, I tell you, I will say real quickly though, I have to always brag a little bit about them. So we have, our oldest one has twin boys. Um, she lives next door. She's an art teacher. I mean, is it, that's all we do in our, our world. <laughs> and then um, she has twin boys. Um, the middle one, Katie, just had the new baby. She lives in New York, and she works for American Eagle. And she, um, great job. She, has, um, she went to SCAD from Savannah, and Martha Stewart hired her right out of school. And then uh, she switched to Ralph Lauren. Uh, Lauren Wren and worked for him and now she works for American Eagle mm -hmm. and she designs she's 30 years old designs all the hats the belts the purses and the bedding for American Eagle internationally so yeah yeah and then our son who we love he's giant he's six foot three um, he works with young men who've been in prison and helps them get their degrees. He's a vice principal in a school, so oh, we're proud of him. Yeah, yeah. Okay, now that I took the little family trip here, um, after I get all the line art done, then the really fun begins, and that's where I get to start painting. And I, I just love the painting part. I paint every day. I draw every day. I paint every day starting, well, this morning was 5.30. I don't usually make it 5.30, but, um, you know, just to get some work done before I left. We take our grandsons to school. I work all day. We come home. I paint till 10.30 at night. Scott has a little couch right by my painting table. We, we Netflix, you know, and all that stuff. So um, I use, um, I, on this particular line, I use gouache paint, mm -hmm. which is a heavier form of pigment than watercolors. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like got a watercolor feel, but it's a heavier pigment. Mm -hmm. And um, the reason I use that is I used to use watercolors and the mill um, would have trouble reading what the colors were. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I went to gouache, which is a little heavier um, with that. My fabrics are printed in Japan. Um, other places fabrics can be printed, um, Korea, Pakistan, India, Pakistan, India um, not a lot of domestic printing, um, some, there's definitely some, and I know some companies are bringing it back, so, um, but mine is printed in, mostly in Japan, and the reason is um, because Japan can get the finest detail and line, and you saw in my drawings, I have a lot of detail in line, so um, we want to make sure that um, comes through. So this is the panel painted um, in the black colorway. And um, when I paint mine, um, I have to do it in three colorways, a minimum of three colorways. And the reason for that is in the printing process, the most expensive part of the printing process is the printing plate. So that's going to be the, the almost like the line art that you saw, and then they change the colors of ink. So they use the same plate for different colorways, and they change the ink colors. So when you walk into a fabric store and you see a red polka dot, a green polka dot, a yellow polka dot, they have used the same printing plate for each one of those and just changed the ink to get the different colors. So by Painting it a minimum of three colorways, it's actually going to be bringing the price down, which I know the price. I know the prices are inexpensive, but it does help bring the prices down as much as possible because you're reusing that printing plate. So that's the black colorway. This is we call it the honey colorway, and then this is the gray colorway. Now on these other two, I just have to paint out one all the way and then the other two show where the colors change where they have to change those colors of course i didn't find that out until i designed about 10 years <laughs> and someone said yeah you know you only have to paint those out a little bit <laughs> there goes 10 years of my life <laughs> um on each one of these and you're going to see this on every single thing we show you there is a color chip chart and this color chip chart, woo -woo, got it, 
are all the colors that I use in this painting. And you all have seen those right on the salvage edge. I'm only allowed to use 17 colors on these. You know, when I'm illustrating a book, I can use a million colors. So sometimes it's a real challenge. Um, this one wasn't so much because it's a tight color group. Um, but, you know, if you're doing like a fall scene with people painting, picking apples and things, there's a lot of different colors in that, and it's hard to stay to 17. But this, for every single thing I do, I paint one of these color chips, and the reason is when, at the, when it's at the mill in Japan, they're going to run that through, and if they can't figure out the color mixture, they're going to cut a little hole out of it. Well, I would rather they cut out a hole of this than a hole out of right here. Because I'm trying to get this on paper plates and napkins and shower curtains <laughs> and anything else I can get it on. And if there's a hole in it, that's not going to happen. So um, as you can tell, they had some problems. So I do this on every single thing that I paint and send for, for um, fabric. Yeah, I want <coughs> Um, so here's that jacquard. When you get a, when there's a hole, then do you have to come up with other colors? Or no, that just means they cut that little piece out and ran it through their scanner, so they could tell what the color mix is. Oh, and yeah. then they can still use yeah. it. Yeah. So it's like um, at Lowe's when you go to get pink house paint. Um, you know, they put a bunch of white in and just a little bit. Well, they have to, they kind of run it through their scanner to figure out what their proportions of color are going to be um, to get those colors. So rather than, um, you know, <laughs> taking a chunk out of my bee, they, they cut that little piece out and run it through. So, yeah, it, it saves a lot of work on my time. <laughs> So here's that jacquard painted out that I said I love. And that, that's that got to be my favorite one. And again, see, I do this with every single one. Um, and when I'm doing the, the lines, I um, keep a recipe of every color that I mix. Because these are all going to be mixed. They're not out of the tube. You know, they're mixed to get where I, what color I want. So I keep a little recipe. And... This is my third B line, so it's really been nice because they all match because I kept my recipes for what, you know, how much blue, how much, well, no blue, but <laughs> how much white, how much gray, you know, how much yellow. So these are going to be the um, colorways. I'll let one of you ladies take these out. And for this group, I did four. And for me, I don't know if you can wherever you want to do this. Don't worry, my grandkids jump on this stuff. <laughs> I'm painting and there's balls flying across the room, you know. Um, for me, it's hard to stop at four colorways or five colorways. Polka dots, let me tell you, I can do 27 colorways, easy. You know, I always want to see what's it look like with red on white, white on red, blue on green, yellow on blue. I want to see what it looks like. It's like giving birth to a child. You've got to get it out. And it's, you've got to know it. You know, you got to see it. So, um, sometimes I don't stop at three. <laughs> this is that, um, the sketchbook one, the larger one. That's how do you get the model look that's on picture onto the fabric? Moda does a really good job of that. I mean, it really, it looks, I think it looks just like my painting. I mean, when I'm going to show you the finished panel, 
up against my painting. I think it looked exactly like that. And I work with a lot of companies, and that does not always happen, you know. It really doesn't. And Moda really works hard getting it um, to where we're happy with it, the designers. And again, that kind of just makes it, you know, I, I'm not going to let something go out that I'm not 100% happy with. And so, um, yeah, I'm going to show you that. Right. Yes, yes. And I'll show you that here. Um, this is, I like this design too. Um, this is one that I worked on. That, you know, I just want you folks to understand this is not done on a computer. I don't draw half of it and say repeat. <laughs> I draw it, I trace it, I move it, I trace it, I move it, I trace it. Trace. So after we get it all, after all the um, coordinates are done, and it depends on how uh, big the group is going to be, how many coordinates I do. Usually on a group I send in eight to ten. Um, sometimes they'll only pick um, six or eight. It used to be I'd send 15 and they would pick 12. But groups are getting smaller and smaller now, which it's smart that they are. You know, that was just so many different pieces. But I always, always send in three or four extra. Always, because I just think, oh, this is the one. This is the one that's going to get us to... Barbados or something, you know, like that, not good. But this is the one. <laughs> so um, I always send in more. So after we get it all done and it's all painted, um, then I send it in. But um, just to kind of let you know the reality of it, there's a deadline. <laughs> and as that deadline gets closer, it gets uglier. <laughs> there are no showers. <laughs> there are no getting dressed. There, no food. Coffee is the main staple. And this happens every single time. And right up to the deadline. And I mean, at the end of it, you know, I'm like the FedEx guy's there. And I'm in my robe and in my coffee. And, and I'm running around trying to just wait, just one more minute, it's almost packed, I promise. You know, and he's like, oh, you got a fabric line there, Deb, you're late on. But it, it does get ugly at the end. Um, but every job has its bad sides, you know, its challenges, and that's mine is, is deadlines. And I have deadlines on everything. I was coloring in the van on the way here, you know, I mean, doing colored pencils. It's just, it's constant. Um, takes a lot of those little little tiny quarters to make a living. <laughs> so we get it all ready and all to the um, all the FedEx and I insure it and send it and overnight it and then I wait to see if it's been accepted because there are no guarantees it will be accepted. And two times in my career, it was not accepted. And that's when you curl up into a little fetal position and turn off all the lights and, you know, kind of woo, cry. Um, but usually, that was really early in my career, and I've learned some tricks to kind of not have that happen. Like, I'm constantly showing colors. Does this look right? You know, do you feel like I'm on the right path? Things like that so that that doesn't happen. And um, so hopefully the next day I get a call saying, oh, we love it, and Scott takes me out to dinner, and I have too much to drink, and you know. So we just celebrate away, and then we start the next one. So, um, but after, so it gets to Moda, and Moda then sends it to the mill in Japan. And then, and I design fabric about a year ahead of what you get it in the stores. So um, right now, next year's Christmas line is already done. In the, it's already in the mill. It's probably going to be done soon. Um, my calendars, I'm getting ready to start working on 2022 calendars. So um, for me, a really big part of my job is paying attention to trends and what trends are way out there 
you know, because I have to be, all the designers, we're all kind of looking way, way out there, um, trying to figure out what's going to be trending a year and a half from now, you know, things like that, colors, themes, um, things like that. There's a couple things that I found myself to help keep me on trend. Um, one of my main resources is young women's clothing stores. Like, um, oh gosh, I can't think. Um, anthropology. They're always right on trend, I mean, way ahead and um, things like that. There's also a color association in New York that will predict the colors coming up in the next year um, that you, you know, you kind of pay attention to things like that. Um, I'm constantly trying to just look. I also call my daughter in New York every once in a while and say, oh, so what, are you, what are you seeing coming down the road there, Katie? <laughs> so that helps too. So the fabric goes to Japan. They've gotten it, uh, they're printing it. And then I get what's called strike-offs back. Well, Moda gets them, actually. And that's going to be one each of every single painting that I did printed out. And these are printed by hand. So I cannot imagine how much labor and cost goes in. But they will send one each of everything. And they will ask me to make comments on changes. Well. I'm pretty obsessive compulsive about my fabric babies <laughs> and I would send back four pages single space college rules back and front changes I wanted to see <laughs> and they don't send these to me anymore. <laughs> or not, but your stores then see the whole collection, the stores that you buy from, and they'll either see it on paper like this or on cloth, like, <laughs> like the strike-offs looked like. Um, so that's kind of pulled all together. <coughs>